Well, good afternoon, everyone, and um, welcome to Agri-Food Conversations, brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is David Yocum. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we have a specific theme, this month's theme being decarbonization of agriculture. On today's call, we're joined by Radhika Mugavkar, Head of Supply and Methodology at Nori. The Nori Carbon Removal Marketplace is more transparent, verifiable, and high quality way to fund carbon removal. An open platform that everyone can invest in with confidence, no matter how big or small their contribution. It allows individuals and businesses to offset their own carbon emissions through simple monthly subscriptions. From there, the money goes to support farmers working on regenerative agriculture projects that store carbon in the soil, further repairing our climate. Now, each of you knows that companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this call because you're some of the smartest, most talented people in Nori's market. You are potential customers for Nori's products and services. You have built a company similar to Nori, or uh, you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities that Nori may face. Now, before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea, get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. And while that poll is running, um, a few process comments. We are not soliciting investment. This presentation uh, is provided information to help Nori find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships to help them grow their business. You can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we'll answer as many questions uh, at the end of the presentation as time allows. And finally, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I am pleased to introduce Radhika Mulgavkar, uh, Head of Supply Methodology at Nori. Um, Radhika, please feel free to take it away. Thanks, David. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. So yes, as David mentioned, I'm from Nori, and I'm here to talk about what we do and our, what we're calling our Nori pilot. So Nori is a carbon marketplace that was found, a startup that was founded in 2017 with the goal of reversing climate change. We've been featured in lots of different um, uh, publications from Coindesk to the Wall Street Journal and others. So to, be, to begin with, what is a carbon offset? Because there's a lot of different language out there to describe different types of carbon offsets. So there, we consider them to have three different classes. There's one avoidance offsets, two reduction offsets, and three removal offsets. What NORI is, is all about removal offsets. So we like to use the term, we must emit less and remove the rest. And so what we are, our goal is, is to remove legacy emissions of carbon to make sure we get back to the 300 parts per million that's needed to really reverse climate change. So we are all about removing carbon from the atmosphere and not about things like reducing emissions or other things. So how do we go about doing that? We do that by generating what's called an NRT. And in the Nori um, parlance, an NRT is a Nori carbon removal ton, and it represents one metric ton of carbon dioxide sequestered in the soil for 10 years. So for the, to start with, I'm gonna give kind of an overview and then dive into some of the details. So phase one is we have project creation. That's when we work with what we call our suppliers. Generally, these are farmers who have adopted various regenerative agriculture practices. From there, we send our data to a third party um, modeling system called Soil Metrics. Soil Metrics um, have, was recently purchased by Indigo Ag, but it's also its academic version is known as Comet Farm. And some of you might be familiar with that. And that provides us with an estimated soil organic, co organic carbon stock change that we used to quantify our carbon credit. So then once we have created our carbon credit, the third part, the next phase is verification in which we work with a third party to verify that our carbon removal is what it says it is essentially that and it's and it's audited by um, these people and to make buyers feel assured that what they're getting is truly one ton of carbon dioxide sequestered in the soil for every NRT they purchase. Finally, we go through a process of generating our NRTs. Uh, on, in the Nori marketplace, we're technically also a blockchain company. So that means that our NRTs are non-fungible tokens or NFTs, and they get generated on the blockchain. And once they are purchased, they are then retired off of our blockchain. So that's phase five of our overall process. So how do we work with farmers or suppliers? 
Um, and the, our first requirement is that they have to be in the US. So we have our um, modeling tool only works in the US and they have to be engaged in croplands farming. Um, and they are increasing their soil organic carbon using regenerative, um, regenerative agriculture practices that I'm sure most of you are familiar with, uh, reducing tillage, additional no, um, reducing fertilizer use or reducing um, synthetic fertilizer, fertilizer use, cover cropping, rotational grazing, those kinds of um, practices. Like I mentioned before, our carbon quantification tool or what we use to, um, to create the soil organic stock measurement is soil metrics. And we have a need from farmers of 30 years of data. And this is how we kind of go about doing it. So first we collect data from our farmers. Like I said, we need 30 years of historical and future looking um, data. So we collect from 2000 to 2030, field by field, crop type by crop type information, and we enter it into the Nori app. If any of you are interested in being um, one of our farmers, don't worry, we don't need you to do all this manually. We have tools to help you get, um, get this data into our system. And so here's kind of an example scenario of somebody who would participate in the Nori marketplace. They would provide us their data, like I said, from 2000 to 2030. They would need to have engaged in a switch year of 2011 or later. So in this situation, the person has engaged in a new regenerative ag practice since two, in 2012. To be really clear about this, you don't have to have just started a regenerative agriculture practice. You have to have added a regener regenerative agriculture practice in 2011 or later. So you could have been no tilling for many, many years, add in cover cropping in 2011, and you would qualify for our marketplace. So the red line then represents the carbon stock that's done with the regenerative practice. And the orange line represents the trend lines that we would get from the practice uh, amount of carbon we would generate under the old practices. From there, with, with the farm records, we also need to collect boundary files. We need to correct, like I said, the switch year, and we also need the hypothetical future records. So then we get to what counts as the actual carbon credit. So in this diagram, what we're showing you is old practices here, these light blue practices, those would be things like intensive tillage, no cover cropping, whatever they may be. And then these are the new practices. These gold line, these gold bars correspond to the new practices adopted in 2016. So if we scroll back to this old, this diagram, the orange here would be those old practices and in the light blue, and this red represents the new practices. The difference between these two is what we what is called uh, generated into an NRT. So the difference between the old practices and the new practices is what our carbon credit is created from. And in the Nori system, as of 2022, you're eligible for up to four years of grandfathered NRTs. This is, the slide has older dates, but if it was 2022 to uh, right here, you would be eligible for carbon um, removal from 2021, 2019, uh, 2020, 2019, and 2018. So it's four years of carbon removal credits, which makes us kind of unique in the marketplace. Once you have entered your data into the system, a uh, farmer has provided a projection of their NRTs and they get to decide whether they want to move forward in the system. So up until this point, they haven't yet um, paid any money, but they have obviously put in a bunch of time. At this point, they do have to commit to paying the verifier about three to $5,000 to get their project um, audited by this third party. So generally speaking, a verifier, um, we per let the, third, the supplier choose the verifier that they want from a list of NORI approved um, verifiers. The verifiers provide a bid to the supplier and the supplier chooses it based on whatever you know, criteria they care about. Generally it's been price. And like I think I mentioned, it's about three to $5,000 per project for verification. So here are some of our verif approved verifiers. We have Astro Global, who we almost exclusively work with, but we have worked with Validus and SCS Global as well. And they have their ver Astro Global and SCS Global in particular have deep experience in other registries in addition to working with Nori. 
So really, why are verifiers important? They are there to kind of audit the project, like I said, so make sure that the data seems reasonable, that they have that the switch date that the um, supplier has provided is accurate. They're also there to ensure that there's proper carbon accounting so that the project is not listed in another carbon marketplace. We can only list these projects on single marketplaces. And they also work to ensure that the farm owner or farmer has the landowner's permission to participate in our marketplace or not. So as I'm sure you're all aware, most farmland is leased and that actually tends to be the most difficult part of verification is getting landowners approval to work to, for the farmer to participate. Once they've gone through verification, they sign an NRT agreement with NORI and that is, allows them to enter the NORI marketplace. Um, and it ensures that they participate in the marketplace for 10 years after an NRT is issued. So what are the terms? They commit to um, updating their farm records each year and verifying every three years during this 10 year NRT agreement. They do get this ability to set their own price to sell the NRT, which is currently at $15, an NRT on our marketplace. Um, they are committing to sell at least 15% of their NRTs on the Nori marketplace, though they can list up to 85% on other marketplaces. To be totally candid, nobody else yet is accepting our NRTs, but maybe as we grow, that will change. And they have to commit to re um, retaining the carbon in the ground for the duration of the contract, so for 10 years. But we do have different clauses that um, allow for force majeure events like events due to weather or unforeseen um, acts of God, quote unquote, that would protect the farmer. And in that case, Nori would assume the liability. And the liability in these situations would be um, to the buyer. And the expectation was the buyer would be made whole and be um, provided the amount of carbon um, that they would have had if the carbon release event hadn't happened. From there, as I mentioned, we issue our NRTs on the blockchain and they are, like I said, that's um, so that they are cannot be resold in any way because once they're issued to the blockchain, they are retired and can no longer be used in any other marketplace. So it's a fraud prevention mechanism. And we get busy selling you the NRTs at this point, and we have currently a first in, first out queue, a FIFO queue, um, which really means that whomever is in line first, whoever's gotten their project verified the most in the past, I guess, um, is up in line to sell, and we just sell right through them. We also have various deals that we work, uh, bespoke, bespoke deals that our um, sales team works on, but people can passively sell on the Nori marketplace as well. And so um, before I jump into the results so far, there's one other piece of the Nori, um, Nori marketplace that I wanted to describe. Uh, as I mentioned, we're a cryptocurrency company. So this year we will be launching our token, the Nori, capital N-O-R-I. And so we'll have two parts to our cryptocurrency company. We'll have the NRT, which I mentioned earlier, uh, is an NFT technically, a non-fungible token. Additionally, we'll have the Nori, which will be a fungible token, if you will, and it will be what suppliers are paid in. So in the future, in the June timeframe, we will no longer be paying suppliers in cash. We'll be paying them in Nori. Um, and we think this is important for many reasons. Uh, one being that we really want to drive price discovery around carbon, and we think that making sure that the commodity that's being um, sold, bought and sold, is not the same as the carbon is important because every time you use the nori you will be retiring new carbon on our marketplace so you will every time you buy an nft use the nori to buy an nrt more carbon is being drawn down even though there's a commodity representing the carbon in the marketplace which will help drive price discovery secondly we think that for suppliers it's a benefit because then they don't have to worry about the price of carbon now they can determine decide when they're ready to sell like any other commodity and if the price is what they want they sell now if the price isn't what they want they wait finally for buyers we think it's actually a kind of a nice hedge most of the world thinks that carbon's only going up in value so you can imagine buyers who maybe have a three-year or four a multi-year strategic plan to reduce their emissions footprints through some carbon removal. 
they can purchase NORIs up front at a lower price and then use that NORI, even if the price of carbon has gone up, to still buy the same value of carbon. So, you know, they're kind of hedging against future price increases. But just so to wrap it up, I'll tell you about our results so far. We've paid nine farmers as of January 2022, and this was early January, 20, January 2022, over a million dollars. And we've, um, we've uh, issued and sold over 70,000, almost 71,000 NRTs. So we feel pretty proud of that. We think we're the only marketplace, in, at least in soil ag, that has accomplished such a large number of, paid such a large number of farmers and paid such a large amount. And with that, um, I'll tab it, turn it back to you, David, to take any questions. Wonderful, thanks, uh, Radhika. We have one question right now from the audience, but as we alluded to earlier, um, if you do have questions, um, the best way to do that, to ask them is to type them in the Q&A box and I'll answer them in the order that they're received. Um, we have one question from Jocelyn. Um, I'm curious what accuracy benchmarks and verification standards slash systems exist to validate soil organic carbon estimations calculated by Comet Farm or Soil Metrics? So soil metrics is, um, if I'm understanding the question correctly, so soil metrics or Comet Farm is an academically based standard. It was created between Colorado State University and the um, USDA. So it's the greenhouse gas implementation tool and it is based on um, soil sampling and data from multiple reference sites in the country. So the original verification, if you will, or author authorization was based through the scientific community and through the, um, you know, the peer review that happened in creating the model. Um, and then separately, the verification that we do, and, and then to be clear, the soil metrics model and the Comet Farm model share the same back end. So the same rigorousness that went into Comet Farm by definition goes, it has gone into soil metrics. Um, and on the front end, we the verification that our that our verifiers do is really about making sure that the data seems reasonable, um, that they are providing the right evidence of the practice change, that they've continued the practice change, they haven't done anything where they've released carbon to enter the carbon marketplace, that kind of moral hazard question. Um, but they don't actually review the soil metrics model on a regular basis. That's more left to the on the academic side through the peer review process. Uh, thanks, Radhika. Um, one one question I have, or maybe one thing I, I think that's an important aspect of what Nori is doing. You know, Paul, uh, who's Nori CEO, put out an article sort of in the early founding days of the company that just talked about the importance of the credits being issued on Nori's platform being non-fungible and that they that they represent new emissions being removed and such that the that the credits aren't being traded in a way that people are in a sense that every time a credit is issued essentially new carbon must be removed from the atmosphere so can you can you talk about the importance of what like what that means and just like how that makes Nori's platform maybe different from like what else is out there yeah, so I mean, as far as we are aware, nobody else is using the blockchain in the way that we are. I'm sure people, some people who are um, really into the crypto space mm -hmm. might have heard of Klima Dow, but they are doing a different thing. So what makes Nori kind of unique is one, um, before this most recent COP, one of the biggest issues and hurdles was this idea of double accounting, where um, people could trade the carbon multiple times and put it on their books as if it was a new zero emission towards their zero emissions. So if you take, you know, just an example, uh, let's say Brazil creates a carbon credit, they trade it to the US, the US would then use it as, the Brazil could use it as a, on their books as reducing their emissions, the US could use it on their books as using addition, as reducing emissions and on and on and on. So Nori's innovation was to, use the blockchain to prevent that because obviously if you're trying to remove the mouse number of emissions, you want every carbon credit to actually reduce emissions. And so what our NFT, like I said, does is once it's created, the it gets retired from the blockchain and can never be traded. So if in that same scenario, what would happen was Brazil had used it, they could not 
use the NFT again, or the, they couldn't trade our NRT again to the US. What they could do is potentially trade the Nori token, and then the US could use the Nori token to purchase more um, NRTs, but that would result in more carbon being, being brought down because that would be a new carbon credit. So that's one of the things that we feel really like is in, in very innovative. Um, the most recent COP, they did come to some agreements around Article 3 to deal with this, but there's still a long ways from getting all the details worked out. And so we feel like we've started the process and, hey, you know, maybe they'll adopt what we're doing. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, right, we have one uh, question, one more question from the audience, uh, pretty straightforward one here, but an important one nonetheless. Um, how does Nori make money? Uh, so yeah, I didn't touch on this, but so Nori makes money. Um, we charge a fee on top of that $15 to buyers. So um, we charge a 15% fee. So a uh, uh, buyer would pay $17.25. We would take $225. $15 would go to the supplier. Um, obviously, the more the price of carbon goes up, the better for us. So we would, you know, 15% is a lot bigger at $30 than it is at 15. Got it. Makes sense. Um, well, with that, um, I'm going to pause here to see if there's any further questions from the audience. I did such a good job to get it all. You did. You did do a very <laughs> good job. Um, well, I, first, first and foremost, Radhika, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and thank you for the great presentation. Um, we, uh, I guess if there's, I guess the last question I'd like to ask you is, there, is how can the audience get in touch with Nori and, and where do you guys need help? Yeah, so if you have any questions or you wanna get in touch, here's my email, it's Radhika, it's really easy, my first name at nori.com. You know, we are always looking for other, more partners in the agriculture space to either enroll farmers um, or who are interested in the carbon marketplace and how to partner with us in verification um, and, or better, maybe helping us streamline our processes to make them easier for farmers and more accessible and, and different types of outreach. So if anyone out there has ideas about this, please feel free to reach out and we'd love to chat. Wonderful. Well, uh, Radhika, thank you so much for joining us today and congrats on all the progress that Nori's seen to date. Um, I'd also like to thank the audience for your active participation. We host agri-food conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central Time. If you want to share this with a friend, we welcome you to do so, and a replay will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. Uh, new viewers can go uh, to register for agri-food conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, we look forward to seeing you next month. Thanks so much. Bye. Thanks,